Today I'm going to show you how the automatic HVAC system works in your car. Now most of the vehicle's HVAC components are actually buried inside of the dashboard, so we're going to have to remove the dashboard in order to see what's inside and how it works. So you can see I've got the lower parts of the dashboard removed. You can see that this black box inside of here is the mixer box for the HVAC system that we're going to dig into. So we need to remove the top half of this dashboard here to get a closer look. Now we can remove the dashboard from the vehicle. And here's what it looks like with the dash top removed. The climate control box here is responsible for changing the modes through these different vents. The middle ones here being the face vents, the top ones there being the defrost vents, and then the bottom one here going to the rear vents, and then we've got ones down below for the feet. Now in order to get this climate box out, I'm going to need to remove all the wiring and all the ducts, as well as this brace that goes from side to side, so I can get access to this box. Well, what is this? It looks like some kind of a GPS tracker or something. And here's what it looks like with the dashboard rebar removed. So here I've got the HVAC system connected. You can see the little mechanisms here that move the little flaps for all of the vents. So this one here is now exposing the face vent. And then if I click it again, you can see that it half closes to give face and foot. And then it fully closes to give just foot alone. And then you can see it'll move the rear motor here to go into defrost mode. And if I put it into recirculation mode, this flap on the blower motor here closes. Alright, now I'm going to remove the blower motor or something. So in behind the firewall here, we've got the two AC lines that go into the evaporator that we're going to remove next. Now part of the cooling system circuit are these two hoses that go into the cabin here. And finally, we have the HVAC box removed from the vehicle. So here we have the entire HVAC system from the interior of the car laid out here, including all the ducting to the defroster, the face and the feet. We've also got the mixer box that houses the heater core and the evaporator core and the blower motor box. So we're going to take a closer look inside of here to see how it works. So just as a quick refresher on how AC systems work in your vehicle, starting at the compressor here, which compresses the gas, it goes over to the condenser on the front of the vehicle where it turns into a liquid, it's then sent through the expansion valve and the evaporator core, which is inside the dashboard of your vehicle, cooling the air in the progress and then the refrigerant goes back out as a gas to the compressor to be cycled over again. Now this vehicle uses a variable displacement compressor which has a swash plate that changes angle to change the piston stroke. I'm going to have another video detailing this. So here we have the blower motor assembly. It's got a electric motor on the bottom here. It's got the intake flap over here to recirculate air from the interior of the cabin or draw in fresh air from outside of the cabin. Now this one has an air filter which allows the filtration of any air particles. That's one really dirty filter. Now if we look closely inside of there you can see that there's actually a flap and that's controlled by the servo over here. We have a three pin connector on the bottom and that's because this unit is actually controlled through the CAN bus. I'm just going to unscrew this motor here so we can have a closer look. See this motor here just has an arm that turns back and forth. If I just pry that off. I'm just going to open this up to see what's inside. So here we have an overall block diagram of the electrical and control systems of the HVAC system in your vehicle. Starting in the middle here with the display unit which is basically the central brains of the system and it basically takes various inputs and outputs and makes a network of these components. Some of the inputs would be your driver switches on the dashboard to control your temperature and your input sensors for your temperature. Some of the outputs would be the actuators as well as an interface that goes out to the ECU for the compressor and the blower motor. Now if we take things down more on a granular level we have the display box here that communicates to each individual motor using only three wires a power supply line a communication line and a ground line and this basically forms a CAN bus and it reduces the amount of wiring that has to go to the HVAC box. Now each motor inside has an actuator as well as a position sensor so you can imagine the amount of wires of each individual one had to communicate to the display unit. Now inside of the actuator we have a control board here that controls this DC electric motor. We've also got it on a spiral gear here with an amplification of the gear ratio by three more gears before it gets to the actual drive motor that drives the arm. Now this basically works just like a potentiometer. We have these two prongs here on the final drive and that correlates to two sliding resistors inside of the printed circuit board. The computer itself is going to pick up where the position of this is relative to its resistance and report it back to the HVAC unit to tell it exactly where the flap is, if it's in recirculated mode or refresh mode. Let's take a look at that motor, pop that out. And you can see this is the CAN bus controller on the back here. Now if we hooked up a little oscilloscope to the communication line there, you'd see that all of the information is actually translated in 
bits, and these bits here have an individual meaning that are spaced apart every 0.1 of a second. Taking all this information and adding it up to a byte will actually give you a start and an end command, and we've also got the information that it needs to transfer and an address to tell it which motor to address it to. And that's pretty much the essence of any CAN bus system. It basically reduces any complexity in the wiring and makes it much easier to diagnose if you have any issues. Let's also look at the mechanism to the motor arm here. We have a slider and then from the slider it connects to a connecting rod that has two cams on either side for both flaps. So they both move into the center position to block off fresh air and they both move back to their relative positions to block off internal cabin air. I'll just remove the cover for the blower motor here and you can see the internal circuitry inside. This is a pulse width modulated motor, that's why there's three connectors on the prong. And it's all controlled through the computer so there's no need for blower motor resistors. Let's remove the blower motor assembly from the housing. This is basically a centrifugal type fan where air from the collector box comes in through the middle here and then these fins here are directed on the outside of the box where it exits out into the air mixer. Now this here is the mixer assembly and it's responsible for mixing air between the feet, the face and the defrost functions and it's also responsible for collecting blower motor air here and turning it into cooler or warmer air depending on what the controllers control these actuators to do. Now if we take a 360 tour of this thing, we have the air inlet over here that collects air from the blower motor. We have two actuators over here with their respective actuating assemblies. We have a connector at the bottom here for a temperature sensor. At the front here we have the foot vent, we have the face vent, and at the top here we have the defrost vent. Moving along the side here we have a vent tube that comes from the internal temperature sensor to read the cabin temperature. We've got another actuator on this side over here. Then finally at the back here we have the two coolant lines that go to the heater core and the two air conditioner lines that go to the evaporator. Now it's worth noting that this is a dual zone automatic climate control which means that there's a split down the middle and there's two separate vents for the left side and right side respectively. Now this entire HVAC assembly is actually assembled from the left side to the right side so we're going to start by removing the two actuators and I'll just remove that. Now this motor over here is actually controlling the mode through this big cam over here. Now the first part of this cam is actuation only controls the defrost flap at the top here. Once I move it a little bit more it moves this entire arm assembly to allow the face part of the vent to open up and then if I move it all the way over you can see that this vent opens up completely allowing full face air to move through the blower box. Now any position in between will allow you a combination of defrost and foot or face and foot vents respectively. So I'm just going to continue to remove every screw that I see until something bad happens. we we'll start removing some of these cams here. Now the cams are timed properly so that these two flaps don't interfere with each other. Looks like the heater core is leaking. I'm just going to use my brother's shirt here to sap that up. Pop off the shroud over here and that reveals the evaporator. Now the blower motor assembly actually brings in air in behind the evaporator. It goes through the evaporator and then through the rest of the system. So I'm going to remove the evaporator so we can have a closer look at it. Now on the back of the evaporator core we have a little temperature sensor here and that basically tells the HVAC system how well the evaporator is doing to make sure it doesn't freeze up. So if we take a closer look at the evaporator core we have the smaller line over here that brings in liquid refrigerant from the AC compressor and it comes into this little block here which is called the expansion valve. Now inside this valve we have an endothermic kind of reaction where the liquid turns into a gas and what that does is it absorbs a lot of heat and makes this entire thing really cold. So this evaporator core kind of acts like the reverse of a radiator taking heat away from the air and cooling it. Now there's just a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this valve on and then remove the expansion valve. At the bottom here we have a hex set screw that I'm going to remove. And then inside of here you can see there's a spring. So this actually looks pretty cool. It's light coolant, but it's actually dye from the refrigerant. It's kind of oily, see? I'm going to wipe that up with my brother's shirt there. It's also green, so I won't notice. So here we have the thermostatic expansion valve. Now what it does is it basically is a controller for how much refrigerant is allowed to go into the evaporator core. It basically works off the principle of expansion due to temperature differences. How it works is essentially you have a set screw here that sets the set position on the preload of the spring and you have this little ball seat here that seats up against the valve body inside of there. Now we have liquid refrigerant that enters over here and it somehow needs to reach over here. Inside of the expansion valve we have this rod inside of here and that's sensitive to the pressure temperature relationship of the system. So when that rod expands it allows liquid refrigerant to enter through the evaporator core and exit back out. Liquid refrigerant will enter this smaller port over here and as it expands over here it'll cool this assembly down. Now I'm going to chop this open to see what's inside. 
Now if we take a closer look inside of the evaporator core, you can see that the liquid refrigerant is going to enter over here on the small side. It's going to cycle all the way through to the other side to aid with maximum heat transfer through these tiny little fins over here. See a cross section here, you can see the tiny little tubes. Kind of makes it look like a radiator with all this dye dripping out. It looks like antifreeze. I'm going to wipe it up with my brother's green t-shirt here. Now inside of here, in front of the evaporator core, we have the temperature mixer and that basically either blocks off the heater core down at the bottom here, allowing cold air from the evaporator to go straight out, or it actually covers up that passage and allows the air to go through the heater core to get warmed up. So I'm just going to take this out so we can have a closer look. Now there is a left side and a right side because this is a dual zone climate control system and they're each controlled with their own actuator on the side of the box. So for example, the driver can independently control their temperature according to the position of this flap compared to the passenger who might want it to be a little bit warmer. All of this is controlled independently through the HVAC control system. Now inside of this evaporator box area we have this vent tube that comes off the bottom here. This vent here will actually go outside of the vehicle and remove any excess water that comes off of the evaporator core. It's also important to make sure that this line doesn't clog up with any debris or particles. Now if I flip this box over we have this other motor over here that controls the temperature of the driver's side mix. And we'll just remove that actuator. Now the mixed motor will actually plug into the actuator door directly. Now this shroud basically prevents your foot from being burned against the heater core pipes. And I'm just gonna remove the shroud here. So I'm just gonna remove the heater core assembly from the mixer box. Now the heater core basically acts like a mini radiator bringing in hot temperature coolant inside of here off of the engine. The remaining coolant is actually cycled back through over here to be recirculated in the cooling system. I'm gonna chop this open. We have coolant that comes in one side here and it travels through these tiny little tubes which you can see the cross section of over here. And it goes from one side all the way over to the other side and the coolant circles back around and comes back through this way where it exits back out through this tube. Now if you look closely you can see these tiny little fins here and what that does is it conducts heat from the coolant moving inside of these tubes here to the air. Now it's made in a zigzag pattern to maximize surface area so when the air goes through it it can transfer as much heat energy from the coolant as possible so you can warm yourself in the winter. Ah, here we go. So here we have half of the mixer box opened up so we can have a closer look at how the airflow works. Of course the whole mixer box is split into two because it is a dual zone climate control system. So if we take a look at the overall airflow throughout the system, we have air that enters through here, it passes through the cabin air filter and then through the blower motor over to the evaporator core. We have the mixer over here which then determines if the air goes through the heater core over here or it bypasses it over to the mode flaps over here that then direct the air accordingly to the foot, the face or the defroster. We have air that starts at the back here from the blower motor and it goes through the evaporator core which sits in the middle over here. Then the air goes through the mixer section which is divided into two for the passenger and the driver's side and that determines how much cold air or warm air is required. Air that is to be warmed will actually come through here to the heater core, be warmed up and then pushed out this way to be mixed whereas cooler air is going to bypass the heater core altogether and just go straight to the vents. At the top here we have the flaps that direct the air to the appropriate duct according to what the HVAC system commands the motors to do. So for example at the top here we have the defrost and when this is opened completely will allow all of the air from the mixer box to go and defrost the windshield. The next function would be to have defrost and foot so this defroster motor will just move slightly to allow some air to be going to the defroster and the rest of the air to escape down to the bottom to the foot. If you want complete foot ventilation, you would shut the defroster off completely and all of the air from the heater or the evaporator core goes to the foot. Then the next step, if you want some airflow to go to your face and your foot, this defroster vent will move halfway, allowing some air to escape through the face and some still to go to the foot. And then finally, if you need face ventilation, this valve will close completely and that will allow all of the air to go out to the face. And in the case of maximum air conditioning, this flap will open up here and allow cool air from the evaporator core to go directly and blow on your face on a hot summer day. Now this last little channel back here will take some of the face ventilation and channel it down underneath the center console to blow on the rear passengers. So the next time you turn on your air conditioning system, think of all of these components that make it work. From the hunk of metal of your evaporator core, to the shards of plastic, to a little motor like this, to a very important expansion valve assembly. These are all the components that are inside your vehicle to make it work. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.